This video looks at determinants of large matrices. So previous videos have introduced the concept of a determinant and definitions for 2x2 two two and 3x3 three three matrices. And now we want to extend this definition and look at larger dimension matrices. Viewers are reminded again that these are definitions. They can't be proved or derived. And you also need to remember a determinant is only defined for square matrices. So a reminder then, if you have a 2x2 two two matrix, then the determinant is given by the product of the diagonals minus the product of the off diagonals. If you have a 3x3 three three matrix, we need this concept of cofactors. So we have an original matrix A with coefficients lowercase a, ij, and then a matrix of cofactors, where I've used a capital A to say this is a cofactor. And by definition, the determinant was found by doing expansions along any row or any column of coefficients times cofactors and adding them together. Now, we didn't prove these formula, um, but we've given the result and you just need to accept it. You can derive it if you really want to. So what about the determinant for 4x4 four four matrix? Now, we use exactly the same concept as we use for 3x3. Three three. So we form these matrices of cofactors. And then we use the same type of formula. So you can see, because it's 4x4, four four, if we sum along a row, we get first coefficient times first coefficient, second times second, third times third, fourth times fourth. You'll see that that formula is exactly analogous to what we used in the 3x3 three three case. The only difference is we've now got four elements on a row, so we're summing four terms. Now, a more general formula will allow expansion along any row or column. So you'll notice here the subtle differences I've said. i am go up to n, because if it's an n-dimensional matrix, I've got n coefficients and n cofactors to multiply and add. And I can also sum along columns. So the extension to larger matrices is obvious once you're happy with the basic concept. But you'll see the warning at the bottom. In general, this is not a paper and pen exercise. It is rather tedious. And again, we've just given these formula. We're not going to prove them. We're not going to prove that if you extend, extend, expand along row 3, you get the same answer as expanding along row 1 or column 5 or whatever. We're just going to tell you that you do. So remarks. We need a general definition for cofactors, because we did it in the previous video for 3x3. Three three, but what happens for 4x4, four 5x5, four, five five, and so on? And therefore, we need a general definition of a sine matrix and a general definition for a minor. And what you'll be pleased to know is these are exactly analogous to those we used for 3x3 three three matrices. So if you understood 3x3 three three matrices, you'll follow the extension and you'll say, oh, well, that's sort of obvious. So defining a minor for a 4x4 four four matrix. And we're going to use the same notation as in the previous video, this RAIJ for the position and the superscript M to say this is a minor. So if I want to find the minor for the 1, 3 position, I move the corresponding row and the corresponding column. So there you see I've removed the third column and the first row. And the minor is simply the matrix that is left. So here, the minor for the 1, 3 position, you see I've given, and it comprises these six elements and these three elements stacked to give a matrix. Hopefully that's obvious for you. So a minor for a particular coefficient, you just strike out the row and column for that coefficient and take whatever's left. And that definition is clearly applicable to whatever dimension matrix you choose. What about the sine matrix? Well, you remember we said you always start with a positive in the 1, 1 position, and then neighboring terms have opposite signs. So the sine matrix should be easy. For a 4 by 4, I put a plus in the 1, 1 position, and the neighboring positions have opposite signs. For the 3, 3, a plus in the 1, 1 position. For the 2, 2, a plus in the 1, 1 position. And hopefully, you can see the extension of this to larger matrices is straightforward. And it's also easy to see that if i plus j is even, then the corresponding sign is positive, and if i plus j is odd, the corresponding sign is negative. 
to find in the cofactor terms for 4 by 4. So again, this is analogous to for the 3 by 3. A cofactor is the determinant of a minor with a corresponding sign taken from the sign matrix. So here, we want to find the cofactor for the 2, 3 position. So first define the minor. Knock off the second row and the third column and look at what matrix we've got left. So there it is. The minor, A23, is given, and you'll notice it's 3 by 3. And then all we do is take the determinant with the corresponding sign. Now, for this position, you'll see that 2 plus 3 is odd. And so the corresponding sign is going to be minus. And therefore, the cofactor is minus the determinant of the minor. And there you are. That's the cofactor. Now you'll see you can find the cofactors for all the positions if you want. You'll see here how the signs come in, the signs in the relevant positions, the minuses where you need them. And to find the whole cofactor matrix, I would need to do 16 3 by 3 minors followed by their determinants. Now you can, I guess, that is rather tedious. So each 3 by 3 by 3 determinant required 3 2 by 2 determinants. We did that in the previous video and that was tedious in itself. So we've got a tedium to find a 3 by 3 determinant and we need to do 16 of these here. So here's a remark on determinants of n by n matrices. A minor is going to be n minus 1 by n minus 1 matrix and therefore to form the cofactor matrix or the bits that you need for an n by n determinant the determinants you need are each going to be dimension n minus 1 n minus 1 and you'll need n of those so to find a determinant of a 5 by 5 you'll need to do 5 4 by 4 determinants that's to find the cofactors along a single row or column and to find each of those 4x4 four four determinants, you're going to need to do four 3x3 three three determinants. So that's to find the cofactors along a single row of the 4x4. Four four. And to get a 3x3 three three determinant, you'll need to do three 2x2 two two determinants. So you add all this together, you're going to need to do 5 times 4 times 3 2x2 two two determinants in order to find a 5x5 five five determinant. And you're immediately seeing here that determinants of larger matrices cannot be handled with a simple application of the definition because the number of computations quickly becomes unmanageable. So while these definitions are valid, we're not going to use them in the longer term. Some numerical examples then. And we're not even going to bother doing a full example because it would just be so tedious we'd be here forever. And the following videos are going to look at shortcuts and tricks so that you can do these calculations much, much more quickly. However, there are some cases we can do by inspection, and those are the ones we give next. First of all, here's a difficult one. You can see it's a full matrix, and if I wanted to find the determinant of that, if you get that in a pen and paper exam, your examiner really hates you. So, what I would do is I would plug it into a tool like MATLAB. So you'll see I've entered the matrix and then I've just gone DET B and MATLAB has given me the answer. So there's a built-in file in MATLAB called DET. What about triangular matrices then? Well, triangular matrices, those with zeros in the upper or lower triangular, here you can see this is a triangular matrix because the upper triangular it's all zeros. And what you can do is you can find the determinants of these matrices very quickly. So here's a formula, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top formula, I'm going to expand along the top row. So if I do that, you'll notice that A12 is 0 and A13 is 0. So by expanding along the top row, I end up with only having to do a11, A11. So I only need one cofactor, which is capital A11. Now that cofactor is given by this determinant here. It means I extract this minor and do the determinant of this minor. And what do you notice? That minor in itself is also lower triangular. And so I can write down by inspection that the determinant is just the product of the diagonal elements. 
and that's the key point here. So all I need to do is multiply together the diagonal elements, which I can almost do by inspection. Now I'm going to extend the same concept to a 4x4 four four matrix. Again, you'll see I've made this matrix lower triangular. triangular. I've put zeros in the upper triangle. So if I expand along the top row, this term is going to be 0, this term is going to be 0, and this term is going to be 0. So I'm going to end up with just B11 times the cofactor big B11. And that's what I've written here. You'll see I've got zeros there, so I've just got one 3x3 three three determinant to do. But when you look at that 3x3 three three determinant, what do you notice? That is also lower triangular. And we've just done on the previous video that if you have a lower triangular 3x3, three three, the determinant is just the product of the diagonal terms. So again, what we find is the determinant here is just given by multiplying all of the diagonal elements. And the other elements are not relevant. So the determinant calculation is very quick. So some examples. Find the determinant of the following matrices. Well, I can see that A is lower triangular. So by inspection, I just write A is the product of the diagonal elements. So it's 3 times minus 4 times minus 8. I'm not going to bother multiplying that out because it's a bit tedious. What about C? You can see that C is lower triangle. It's got all zeros in the lower triangle. So therefore, I can see that the determinant of C is just going to be 6 times 2 times 3 times 2. That is the product of the diagonal elements. What about this example? And you're saying, oh, just a minute. This isn't lower triangular. But I can still use a judicious choice of row or column for the expansion. And here, you'll see if I take the third row, there's lots of zeros. I could also take the fourth column, but here I'm going to take the third row. So let's expand along the third row, and this is what you'll get. You'll see that I get 5 times the cofactor for 3, 1, and then all the other ones are multiplied by 0. So they disappear. And when I find capital B, 3, 1, what do you notice? That is lower triangular. So I can do the determinant of the minor for B31 by inspection, just by the product of the elements. So what looked like a messy matrix by taking a sensible choice of row for my expansion has reduced to a simple determinant calculation. I've just got to multiply four numbers together. So a summary. We define the determinant of n-dimensional square matrices using cofactors and minors. Expansion can be along any row or column. And the underlying definition, however, is tedious to compute and not a paper exercise in general for 4x4 four four matrices and larger. However, this is a key point, shortcuts do exist for upper and lower triangular matrices, and sometimes with sparse matrices you can identify an easy solution by choosing the right column or row for your expansion.